Hi folks. In this episode, we're going to talk about uh, you know, potential solutions of uh, uh, coalitional games. So I would like to um, walk uh, through this example because I think it uh, explains the reasoning and the logic very nicely. So this is the ice cream example. If you remember, there are three kids this is, uh, this is what they have, initially, amount of money uh, player A, B, and C have. And then um, they can buy one of those three ice cream. Um, the small one is uh, 500 gram, but uh, costs $7. Medium is 750 gram, $9. And the large one is 1000 gram and costs $11. So they need to pool their resources. And as we discussed earlier, this is a super additive game. So we can just assume that they're going to form the grand coalition, meaning player A, B, and C will actually uh, pool their resources together. So that means they're going to collect $13. And so they're going to buy the large ice cream. Well, with the remaining $2, as you see, they can't buy extra ice cream. And so the extra $2 will be wasted, unfortunately. Um, so the thing is, therefore, uh, once a sort of uh, part of the solution is already obvious, is like they're going to form the grand coalition thanks to super additivity. But the question is, how are they going to split this 1000 gram of ice cream among themselves? Well, for an outcome, remember it's a payoff vector, so uh, I'm going to denote them, uh, denote it as xA, xB, and xC. Uh, because instead of using one, two, three, I just want to use the names A, B, and C of the players. And so remember the individual rationality means this should be greater than V of A, which is, as we know, zero because his money is not enough to buy any ice cream. Same is true for agent B and, and player C. So therefore, uh, you know, as long as they are non-negative, um, the payoff vector is going to be uh, satisfying individual rationality. And then finally, xA plus xB plus xC must be equal to 1000, which is the total amount of uh, the value of the grand coalition, A, B, and C. Okay, so therefore, if you check, I have some candidates as potential good outcomes. Uh, all of those are potential outcomes, all right? There are, in fact, infinitely many outcomes. Well, the question is, if these, you know, three kids play this game, what would be the optimal outcome? Well, what is optimal, right? I mean, we didn't define it. Actually, this is what we're going to do in, in the next episode, uh, formally. This is sort of the intuition. We're building an intuition. Well, let's consider this outcome and ask the question, ask the following question. Is this really a good outcome? I mean, do you think these guys are going to play this game and end up this payoff factor? Well, obviously it depends a lot of things, but here's our logic. Uh, if you look at this, uh, they're actually sharing it equally. It's, it's, it feels like it's a pretty fair division, right? Everybody gets equal share. Uh, but the thing is, uh, player A and B can actually object to this. Well, why? Well, because they can say, they can argue um, against uh, player C that, look, I mean, we are sort of, I mean, we are already chipping in a lot of our money, like $6 plus $4, $10, all right? Um, and with our, you know, collective uh, contribution, we could actually, I mean, if we exclude you, C, I mean, uh, we can end up getting 750 gram, uh, the medium ice cream, right? Because $10, so they can afford the $9 medium ice cream. And so A and B can actually form a coalition by excluding player C. And in this case, remember the V of, I mean, they can get 750 grams of ice cream and they can split it X A prime X B prime, let's call it, say as follows, 400, 350, or maybe equally, all right? So that's, that's not fair division, quote, unquote, 
but 375, 375, which is the half of 750. Well, 1000 divided by three is approximately 333, okay? So the thing is, uh, if player A and B basically kick player C out of this coalition, uh, they can form their own coalition and end up with higher, uh, sort of more ice cream. So, uh, you know, including player C into our coalition is not really beneficial, player A and B are going to uh, argue. And so this outcome is not stable in the sense that, uh, you know, uh, player A and B could actually kick out one of the players and form their own coalitions because that is beneficial for them. So if you remember the Nash equilibrium, in the Nash equilibrium deviation, but one person deviation shouldn't be profitable. So here we're looking on not one person deviation, but group deviations are not, or, or, or are they profit, uh, profitable or not, okay? So here, and individual deviations are clearly not profitable because if, for example, one of the players, say player A, leaves this grand coalition and try to buy the ice cream all alone, he's going to get nothing because he can't afford ice cream by himself. So here, clearly individual deviations are not profitable, but group deviations are profitable. So here again, A and B can kick out agent C, player C, and form their own coalition and that end up, both end up higher uh, sort of payoff. So in that sense, this is not a stable outcome or good outcome. All right, so we're going to call goodness uh, with stability. Well, all right, well, what about this one then? Like 375, 375. So player two agrees to give these two fellows more than uh, this one, you know, what they got here. And so he agrees to accept something less than this. Is this a good outcome? Huh, well, let's look. Now player A and B, if they want to kick out player C and form their own... Uh, coalition, remember, uh, their worth is going to be 750. And so they have to split this. They don't have to split it equally. If they split it equally, well, they get exactly the same thing. So no profitable deviation. So they can try to increase this. For example, player A can get more, uh, 375 plus some X. But the thing is, in this case, the other guy should get minus X. Because remember, when A and B form a coalition, the maximum payoff they can get is 750. And so if I give you more than 375, that means I should get less than 375 because when I add them up, it has to be equal to 750, which is the worth of this coalition. Remember the feasibility condition? Okay, so that means player A and B here have no incentive to deviate and kick out player C. All right, but is that it? Well, maybe player three, player C, I'm sorry, is going to talk to player one, A, and say, look, A, Adam, I know you're getting 375 and I'm getting 250, but you know what? If we kick player B out of our sort of group and we form our own uh, coalition, A, C, what is our worth? Well, A and C, $9, we can afford medium ice cream, so 750 grams. So you know what? We don't even have to split it equally. I can give you more than what this payoff is currently offering you, and I give you 400, all right? And then I get my, so this is XA prime, and XB prime, I, you know, the rest is mine, 350. So what do you think about this? Well, the thing is, 350 is definitely better than 250 for player C, and 400 is definitely better than 375 for player A. So you know what, player A is actually going to accept that deal. Well, here, don't forget, when we make all these payoff comparisons, um, here, the emotional how should I call it? Uh, the emotional 
uh, this utility of kicking your friend out of coalition is not really included in the payoffs. And that's the assumption I was trying to talk about earlier. Uh, it's like the payoffs, uh, I'm sorry, uh, the other coalitions do not impose any positive or negative externality to other uh, coalitions, all right? So the, the payoff within a coalition is only depending on that coalition, all right? The other coalitions do not influence or affect the payoff of, uh, you know, a, a given coalition. So again, uh, let me underline this fact or assumption is like when you, when A and C kick out agent C, maybe this is going to bring some disutility. And so this 400 may not be as good as it sounds in comparison to 375 because I kicked out my good friend B and so I'm going to feel terrible. And so I don't want, so again, it's like uh, all payoffs are represented by those numbers, all right? So whenever you see higher number, it means a sort of a more preferable uh, sort of outcome. So the bottom line is, this is not a good outcome because this is not a stable outcome because this time agent A and C has incentive to kick out one of the agents and form their own coalitions, all right? So, all right, you can basically iterate this way and at some point you may end up something like this, 500, 250, 250. Is this a good outcome? Well, if agent A and B gets together, form a coalition, the worth is 750, same for agent A and C. And the thing is, when agent A and B kick C, um, they can not split in a different way that will increase both agents' uh, payoff. All right? So therefore, agent A and B has no incentive to deviate and form their own coalition. Same for agent A and C. What about agent B and C? We didn't really think about this, but if agent B and C kick out agent A, B and C, they can uh, collect $7, which means small ice cream, so 500. So the value, the worth of a coalition BC is 500. So the question is, is there a way of splitting this 500 between these two players so that both of them can get better off? Impossible. All right, because 250, 250 adds up to 500. So if you want to increase one guy's payoff, well, you have to decrease the other guy's payoff because once again, XB prime plus XC prime must be exactly equal to 500. Remember, I mean, you can't consume more than what you can afford, which is 500 grams. So therefore, this coalition is actually stable. So huh, it sounds like a good uh, outcome. Well, then the next question is, are there any other stable outcomes, all right? Uh, usually there are many others, but the, the other concern is like, is this really fair, efficient? Because, you know, uh, Agent A, uh, well, yeah, he, he sort of uh, bring a lot of, a lot more money than C, for example, and he's actually getting two times more. So for Agent A, it sounds like a very good deal, but B and C, and I mean, B, you know, marginally brings more money than C, and so maybe he should get more. I mean, is that fair, whatever fairness means? So we're gonna talk about it later. But before that, let's talk about this, all right? For example, is this a stable outcome or a good outcome? Well, um, so if you look at B and C, it adds up to 500, which is the worth of this coalition, so they don't really have incentive to deviate. Um, but however, A and C can get together and then form a coalition by kicking out agent C. And remember A and C, when they get together, they can buy ice cream of 750 gram. And so they can split it something like, I don't know, um, 600, 150, all right? And therefore this guy gets uh, zero because again, uh, only these two guys form a coalition. So who cares about what uh, uh, player B gets? Player A and C, both of them get higher payoff. And so you know what? Player A and C have incentive to deviate and form their own coalitions here. So therefore, this is not a stable outcome either. So 
out of one, two, three, four examples that I sort of talked about, only one of them uh, seems like a stable or sort of a good outcome. So what we should do first, uh, sort of generalize this concept of and formalize this concept of uh, stability. And, and then maybe we should bring other uh, nice properties like fairness, for example. So this is exactly what we're going to do uh, next.